So today's webinar is about building lessons for online learning and this is going to be presented by the College of Arts and Technology led by Sir Sherwin. So we have a couple of his instructors with us to share their experiences and I believe uh, CIIT was one of the first schools no, to implement online learning. So Sir Sherwin, uh, welcome. Uh, so good afternoon to everyone. Um, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for the invitation and the privilege to be able to reach out to the different educators you know, within um, Brilliant Creations Publishing Network. Um, so uh, again, um, my team today uh, is from CAIT College of Arts and Technology. We are a, um, I guess, a medium-sized tertiary education um, college based in Kamuning, Quezon City. Uh, so don't post sa mga Taga Quezon City or katabi po ng Quezon City. Uh, good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. Um, well, the story of CIIT really um, becoming one of the first, if not the first institution to resume our classes fully online last June 15 uh, began about maybe uh, sometime mid-early to mid-April. Uh, we made the decision um, based on a lot of the government reports that were coming out. Uh, to really shift the entire program to online. Uh, and not only that, we were also able to experience holding online classes when, it, when the ECQ was implemented uh, throughout the entire country. During the last four weeks of our second term, when we implemented online classes, I think we made a lot of mistakes, but at the same time, because of all the frustrations experienced by our students and our faculty, uh, we were able to use these experiences and find solutions and strategies okay, uh, to really prepare for our full shift towards online uh, come June 15. So I think about two weeks ago, uh, we resumed online classes. The response has been honestly surprisingly positive for our students about, I think, um, I think maybe 98, 95 to 98% positive responses. Uh, perhaps a few technical glitches, but really, really quite rare. Um, we were we were bracing ourselves for a deluge of you know probably frustrations and complaints, but surprisingly, that was not the case. We had we had comments. We had a lot of positive comments as early as the first day from our students. Um, which leads us to think that perhaps we might have gotten a lot of things right, okay? Over those things that we might have done wrong, okay? Um, this June 15, however, is still in the larger scheme of things for CIIT. This June 15 term is also going to be a term where we are still going to expect to learn more things about conducting online classes, okay? Um, this is going to be a nine-week term. Uh, for a school calendar, it's it's equivalent to about one quarter, okay, based on CHED, CHED uh, policies and regulations. So it's going to be one quarter, and all the lessons we're going to take from these from these nine weeks will also be once again applied to our um, school year that starts end of August, uh, together with probably most, if not all, of the colleges and universities in the country, okay? Um, what we're trying to do now is because we find ourselves in this, you know, unique position and unique opportunity to have been really prepared well in advance uh, for this crisis that the education industry faces. We're doing our part in nation building and reaching out to all schools and sharing our expertise. Okay, this is one of those avenues where we're just trying to help as many schools as we can whether it be teachers or school administrators, navigate okay, on how best to shift. Uh, I think today's, uh, today's, today's team, composed of uh, Michael and Patrick here, uh, part of our faculty members in CAID, uh, could share a lot about the culture of what CAID has. Okay? And it's not really about trying to share the technologies or the tools, but it's really the mindset that we have in the school. I remember, I remember the first time we reached out to CHED. I called the director for CHED NCR 
uh, to share our plans for June 15 because we were first. We had very, very little guidance. Um, but we had to share our plans and communicate it with Ched to make sure that everything checked out. Um, uh, I think they referred to us as the experts right now on this. Uh, we're, we don't necessarily have the... I personally, she mistakenly called me Dr. O and I told her that, ma'am, uh, I'm not yet a doctor, a doctor degree holder. And she said, no, 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 but right now it's really... It's really your 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 competence in technology that's uh, most important and most needed. So perhaps today, that's the, the same culture that both our faculty members will be sharing to you. Okay. So I'll first introduce Michael, uh, Michael Pahanil. Okay. Uh, Michael is a part of our general education team in CAIT. Um, he has a he has a bachelor of secondary education, majoring in social studies minor in, in English from the University of Philippines, Diliman. Okay? He's also currently pursuing his Master's of Arts in Sociology, also from UP Diliman. Currently, he's with us as a full-time instructor, um, teaching general education, social science subjects at the college level. Uh, I think some of the specific subjects he teaches uh, would include contemporary world, general sociology, and science, technology, and society. Okay. The second speaker, so we're separating the, this is not going to be just a pure webinar. There's going to be a parang sort of a workshop component because what we really want here is not just knowledge sharing, but for faculty to get started okay, uh, with something, uh, probably a lesson plan. Um, the second speaker, um, John Patrick Pineda, uh, obtained his AB political science degree. Uh, he graduated cum laude from FEU Manila. Okay, and he did his uh, internship at the office of the vice president in 2015. Uh, he served as the chair in the Philippine Model Congress in 2015, which was a gathering of young leaders in the Philippines. Okay, currently, a PhD philosophy student at De La Salle University, Manila. And he's currently teaching social science and philosophy subjects with us in CAIT, College of Arts and Technology. Okay, so I hope that these two speakers this afternoon would be able to share to you guys the tools, uh, the techniques, um, and not necessarily just focus on the technologies, okay? But helping teachers make the learning experience for students even better, okay? In an online setting, uh, whether we like it or not, online really is the the only way forward, okay? Distance learning or flexible learning is the only way forward, and it's really incumbent upon teachers and schools to make sure that we maintain as much of the quality uh, as we can, even though we've shifted to a different learning modality. Okay, so with that, thank you once again. Um, I hope that this becomes a very engaging and uh, meaningful afternoon for everyone. So I'll turn over to the speaker now. Thank, uh, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Uh, before, before I turn you guys over to the webinar proper, I just want to remind uh, everyone, especially the new participants, to please rename yourselves here in Zoom. Uh, just click on the participants bottom, uh, button at the bottom of the screen and click on your name, uh, more, and then rename. And then indicate your school name and your full name so that we can easily uh, track your attendance. Thank you very much. So without further ado, I think uh, our first speaker is Michael. Sir Michael. All right. Uh... Um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the first part of our webinar. Uh, I would really like to thank, first of all, Brilliant Creations for this opportunity na magkakasama po kami ngayon with my colleagues to really share to everybody our experiences in teaching during this time na meron tayong, um, meron tayong reality that we are going to really do distance learning. So let me just share my screen here. Here. Okay, so again, good afternoon. My talk will be on lesson planning for asynchronous learning. So tips, strategies, and best practices from the CIIT experience. A brief rationale lang po para sa, uh, sa lahat, uh, how we structured this webinar. Me and my colleague, Sir Patrick, will be talking about two different uh, approaches in lesson planning. I will be talking about the asynchronous part, and my colleague, Sir Patrick, will talk about the synchronous learning experience. So. 
The, as the subtitles uh, suggest here, tips, strategies, and best practices from the CIIP experience. Uh, I would like to give out my note that I am not coming from uh, the position of somebody who has, who has been doing this for many years already. Uh, galing din po ako sa, sa experience na biglaan po tayong na-uproot from our face-to-face -face classes and um, put in an environment kung saan we really have to adjust and uh, reevaluate our positions as teachers currently in the um, in the setup that we have right now na distance learning. So I'm coming from a perspective na uh, mula sa mga na naranasan ko po sa mga na sa mga trials and errors and at the same time mga solutions na na figure out ko along with the help of of the people around me especially co-workers in CIIT. So some of the presentation highlights what to expect here in the first part. So of course we're I'm going to be providing uh, some basic list of the common internet-based applications and programs for the asynchronous delivery of lessons. So yung mga must haves po natin pagdating sa mga kailangan na meron tayo as teachers sa mga uh, devices natin. Next we'll have uh, to identify the general principles and strategies in planning activities or overall lessons or courses for asynchronous learning. So yung napaka-importante po dito na uh, I'm not, to, to, really, to really note from now na I'm not going to be giving out um, specific lesson plans for specific subjects but I hope na sa mga isi-share ko po sa inyo ay makikita po ninyo yung mga general principles na ginagamit po po para sa pagpa-plan ng activities. And then uh, I I will be discussing a method. One of the, the methods I use in monitoring students within the framework for uh, of asynchronous learning. And lastly, I will be discussing a strategy that I use to enhance my assessments. Okay, in 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 a in an asynchronous setup. So you know, apat lang po ang goals natin for this uh, for this part. So let's uh, move on. So I would like to start with this. So I got a screenshot of this uh, news article from the Inquirer. It says here, Walang signal, NTC fails to connect to Senate virtual hearings online. So, uh, this is really a, a very important thing to note regarding our current setup. The NTC is the National Telecommunications Commission sa Pilang Pilipinas and uh, this, this government agency, okay, sila mismo, hindi sila nakakonek sa isang Senate virtual hearing na konektado sa online learning. So, uh, the irony it's very ironic na itong itong uh, itong commission na to that is tasked to handle yung telcos natin, yung internet services natin, sila mismo nagkakaroon ng struggles regarding their own connectivity and technological limitations. So what more our students? What more our teachers? So I would like to begin with some of the basic assumptions on online learning that we have to somehow question and challenge ngayon. So one of the assumptions that we should uh, make or we should never make is that never assume that students and even teachers have fast, consistent internet connections. That is why the focus of my presentation really is on asynchronous learning. Yung learning that is that occurs that not online, not uh, real time, pero something na pwede i-upload para st ang mga students ay kaya nilang gawin on their own time even with limited internet connectivity. And we should also never assume that all students have the latest gadgets and resources. Marami po siguro sa atin coming from public schools na karamihan ng mga estudyante natin ay from the lower, the, the lower um, uh, socioeconomic uh, strata of our society. So napaka-importante to be em empathic sa kanilang uh, position, sa positionality nila and sa mga resources na may access sila. That's why I am, this presentation will be coming from that perspective. I-assume po natin na uh, may limitations ang gadgets natin. So how will asynchronous learning uh, take place given the technological limitations? And then we should also we should also change or question our assumptions about our role as teachers because it has now changed in the context of distance learning. For example, in CIIT, um, kung dati very focused lang kami sa pagtuturo sa so to just um, transfer knowledge to uh, to just teach. But now, nagbago ang role namin or nadagdagan or na-enhance ang role namin in terms of um, mentoring. Nag nadagdagan kami in terms of 
um, or na enhance yung role namin because we recognize the different uh, environments that our students have right now. At the same time, the different needs that are that have uh, that that rose from the distance learning uh, context. And lastly, we cannot assume that we can fully convert face-to-face -face teaching practices for distance learning because that is something that I will have to address early on. Uh, if we have this assumption na kung anong ginagawa po natin sa face-to-face -face classroom natin, sa physical classes, ay ilalagay mo lang naman sa internet, ay tapos na yun. Actually, hindi. Nagbabago po ang itsura ng ating mga practices when it comes to distance learning. Okay, so these are the basic assumptions that we will be working with and challenging dito sa ating presentation. So let's go to the first one. Must have applications for delivering asynchronous lessons. Ano ba yung mga go-to applications po natin? Yung mga dapat naka-download sa mga cellphones natin at sa mga computers natin na para makatulong sa atin. So here in my phone, talagang napaka-importante po sa akin na meron ako ng mga applications na to to enhance the teaching experience and the learning experience in, the, in an asynchronous setup. So for communication, para makakapag-communicate po tayo sa mga estudyante natin, I would recommend, based on experience, to install or register for email, ideally Google Mail, because um, Google allows you to unlock the different Google apps like Google Drive, Google Documents, uh, Google, uh, Google Meet, of course. So yun ang recommendation, if ever man wala, kayong, wala pa kayong Google Mail. So this is this could this could be the recommended na official method of communication. It's private, it's professional, and it's also secure. So you can use that for your emails to students. So um, ang tip ko po dito is that if ever wala pa pong existing mailing list, uh, encourage your students or to the point na pwedeng i-require that they have their own emails. Okay? Kung wala pa silang emails, at least have their emails so that you can send lessons to them via email. Next. Instant messaging apps, Messenger, Viber, Google Hangouts, Telegram, um, yung mga instant messaging because this will be used for rapid communication. May kailangan kang ibigay na announcement or kailangan kang ma-reach ng estudyante mo during your consultation hours ng mas mabilis at mabilis yung notifications. So instant messaging, you can send there yung mga details, announcements na kailangan makita agad ng mga estudyante. Okay? And then you can monitor sino ba yung mga nakapag -seen. But regarding this, I would also recommend na kung pwede, kung kakayanin po ninyo, huwag po tayong gumamit ng Messenger uh, because it's, for a lot of us, Messenger or Facebook is our personal social space. So maybe uh, you can use other apps para mas dedicated for lessons, for classroom use. So for example, in my case, I use Google Hangouts. I required my students to use their Google emails to sign up for Google Hangouts and install them on their phones. Para yun yung gagamitin po nila at gagamitin ko if ever I need to communicate with them immediately. So that's for communication. What about for files and documents? Now, in, in an asynchronous setup, napaka-importante ng mga documents. Yung mga i-upload po natin na mga presentations, mga babasahin, yung mga materials, yung mga videos na meron, yung mga recordings, it's very important that we have an internet-based uh, application to read all of those files. So, ito yung mga basic recommendations po po because th these are the most accessible na meron tayo. So, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader for PDF documents and then, napaka-importante, Google Drive or any cloud-based file storage depende po sa ginagamit ng school ninyo whether you use OneDrive for Microsoft or Dropbox or whatnot. But for our school in CIIT, we use Google Apps, we use Google Drive. Doon naka-upload lahat ng mga documents and we can just share the link to our students so that they can access it on their own time. Along with Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, you can use that po for collaborative documents. Kung may kailangan po kayong gawin na mga um, yung mga offline na kailangan nilang gumawa ng notes or gumawa ng mga papers na pwede nyo pong i-monitor or you can also do group works, collaborative group works using Google Docs. So, nandyan po yan. So, pwede nyo i-explore paano ba ginagamit ang mga Google Apps na ito. Learning activities. Paano po kapag kailangan nyo na magbigay ng mga activities? Discussion boards. Okay? Discussion boards, uh, what else? Mga quizzes, online quizzes, online exams, and um, mga kailangan mag-submit ng mga assignments. 
So for those schools na merong learning management system na nakasubscribe po kayo sa so let's say Canvas, Edmodo, Moodle, Blackboard, these are flexible, powerful, all-in-one LMS. So please maximize the use of them or if hindi pa kayo nakapag-subscribe um, to a learning management system, I really recommend because based on my experience, it has really helped me centralize, okay, to centralize all the activities and all the, all the things that we're doing in, in class. Later, I'll be showing an example of what I do within my, the LMS that we're using. Now, suppose, wala po kayong LMS. Let's say, um, let's say hindi makapag-invest pa as of now and that's, and that's, per, and that's okay as of kung depende sa resources. So, I would give a recommendation, especially for, um, for those na kailangan ng very accessible. You can use Facebook as an alternative to an LMS, okay? Uh, because number one, it's accessible. It's also free. Kasi nga, di ba, may free Facebook. So, pag nag-post, pag gumawa po kayo ng Facebook group para sa klase ninyo, you can upload. Uh, you can upload the, your files. You can upload uh, discussion questions for your students, especially kung araling pandipunan po kayo or meron kayong assignment, you can make them answer through Facebook. At dahil may free Facebook, students who do not have data can also access. Okay? Para, para na, na cover po natin yung mga learning needs ng studyante, especially with their financial and technological limitations. But as much as possible, um, for worst case scenarios lang po, if, if you can help it, um, I would not recommend Facebook kung, kung kaya naman may iba. Because Facebook is very, syempre, it's our personal um, social space. On one side, at the same time, it's yung security reasons, yung issues for Facebook, and also uh, may mga, syempre, diba? it's Facebook. It's, it's very distracting to be on Facebook. So, I would, so sa mga worst case scenarios, okay, pwedeng maggumamit ng Facebook. Okay? Pero may honorable mentions din po ako. Basic phone apps. So, let's say, uh, yung, mga, yung mga binigay ko po kasing example, mostly are internet-based. Kailangan nyo ng internet. But para dito sa honorable mentions, basic phone applications, kayang-kaya po yan for as asynchronous uh, learning. So maximize the use of your basic phone capabilities. You can use the camera to record lessons and eventually upload students. Voice recorder for low bandwidth files and lessons. So makagawa po kayo ng PowerPoint. And then habang nagpa-PowerPoint, may recorder kayo. And then you submit, uh, you, you send it to your students yung recorded na lesson along with the PowerPoint na pwede nilang i-follow while listening. Uh, you can also use text messaging. May mga gumagamit po ng text messaging and calls. Pag kailangan ng oral exam na walang internet, you, you can call the student and then you can have a discussion via call or messaging. Okay? In worst case scenarios or talagang walang internet. Okay, so these are some of the go-to apps that I use and I would recommend to everybody. But it depends on your school, kung meron pang nire-require at uh, nire-recommend for you to use. So that's it para sa mga recommended applications, mga must-have for asynchronous learning. Now, let's move on to planning lessons kasi ito yung pinaka-meet ng ating discussion. How do you plan your lessons or maybe how do you plan an entire uh, subject Okay, for asynchronous learning. Yung learning na hindi kailangan ng uh, consistent, strong internet connection. Yung pwede naman yung intermittent internet, parang uh, during these days may internet, upload, download lang nila lahat ng materials and then they can submit on another day pag maayos na yung internet nila. So I'm gonna give a few tips for everybody. Okay? But now I want everybody to understand. Based on our registration form na sinabit ninyo, may, may nagtanong po kasi doon. Sabi doon, what is the most important thing to consider when it comes to teaching in the distance learning environment? Okay? What is the most important thing to consider? So the key concept that I want everybody to remember from this, uh, from this part of the presentation, okay? structure. Napakahalaga po na meron tayong structure for our students. Napakahalaga that we provide our students with a sense of structure, stability, predictability in the way we deliver our asynchronous lessons. So how do we do this? So here are some of my tips. Now, uh, kung makikita po natin dito sa screen, 
this is what CIIT uses as a framework. Like, ito yung pinaka uh, skeletal framework namin when it comes to creating uh, lessons for uh, for a particular week. So, meron po kaming time frame. If you look to the to the left, there's a time frame. May nakalagay week one and then learning outcomes and then topics. If you can see in the middle, we have there teaching and learning activities. It's divided into synchronous and asynchronous activities. So, I will be dealing with the asynchronous activities for this part. This is providing the students with a vast uh, with options para makapag uh, ma maximize nila yung potential nila to learn in a, in a distance learning environment. And then nakalagay din po dito kung anong platforms and kung ano yung assessment strategy na gagamitin for that particular week. Now, let's go to the details, the specific details of what I want to show everybody today. Tip number one, time frame. Okay? To provide our students with a structure, we need to provide a time frame. A clear schedule of activities. Napakahalaga po when you're structuring your courses, you provide them of a, with a clear schedule. Topic schedules, kailan ba yung topic na to? Kailan yung, um, kailan yung mga assessment dates? Para nakikita nila, ah, itong linggo na to, ang topic namin, for example, if you're in science, topic namin ay respiratory system. Tapos yung quiz nito, next week. Na-anticipate ng students. Na-anticipate din dapat ng students kung kailan ang deadline ng mga important projects, important assignments. So it's very handy for teachers and even your your own your school to already have like a, a calendar of events, uh, an academic calendar and naka naka um, based doon kung ano yung gagawin yung schedule for your class. Okay, and also consultation hours. Kailan lang po ba pwedeng kausapin si teacher? Kailan kailan available si teacher for consultations? This ensures predictability kasi na-anticipate, na-expect ng students kung ano yung gagawin. And accountability between the teachers and students. Accountable kayo sa isa't isa. Why? Because the, the, because the students cannot claim na, Alam, sir, hindi ko naman po alam yan, sir. Uh, wala naman nakalagay. Pero nakalagay. It's already clearly stated in your schedule. And for the teachers as well. So that students can expect from their teachers na, ah, Ma'am, sir, uh, sabi niyo po meron ganitong topic or ito yung deadline. So, it's a, it's a two-way thing regarding, regarding uh, creating structure for our teachers and students. So, uh, the rationale for, my, for including time frame is that the distance learning setup blurs the lines between home and school. Thus, students have less structure and awareness of time. A clear schedule allows students to know what to expect and provide a sense of stability. Hindi na po kasi natin minsan alam kung saan ba magsisimula ang trabaho or pag-aaral at kailan ba yung leisure time natin sa bahay because everything is just so uh, muddled together already since the in physical environment is just the home. It's just the uh, the home home life of students. So yan po ang rationale for this part. So here's an example that I included here. Uh, I included in my in my course naka-announce po kaagad yan sa simula pa lang. Okay, students, every every Friday 1 to 2 p.m. yan yung live lecture, the synchronous lectures which will be discussed later on. So na, so they know that every 1 to 2 p.m. ng Friday may lecture and I give them the link that they can use. Okay? Homework. So every week nagbibigay ako ng homework at alam nila na every Thursday dapat 11:59 p.m. pasok na ang homework nila sa submission bin. Also, consultation schedules. Okay, nandiyan malinaw kung ano yung mga schedules, anong oras nila ako pwede ma-reach, what time I am available for them. So, time frame, predictability. Ano pa? Example. Now, in my lessons or the, the, the in how I structure my lessons or weekly plans, I do it in this way. Kung mapapansin po natin yung mga highlighted, if you look to the left, okay, when you look at week 4 and week 5, May nakalagay na inclusive dates. July 6 to 10, July 13 to 17. So alam nila, ah, pagdating ng July 6 hanggang 10, ito ang topic. Pag-uusapan namin ang the society in the global age. Okay? And if you look at the middle part, meron ako nilagay dyan, homework for cultural globalization. So kung mapapansin nyo po, naglagay po ako ng homework sa gitna, Para aware sila na week 4, ibibigay ko ang homework 4, which they will submit. Kailan po nila isa-submit? If you look at week 5 sa dulo, yung deadline is 
July 16. Ay, July 15, I'm sorry. Malagay pala doon. So, malinaw kung kailan yung deadline. So, nandyan ang structure. Kitang-kita ng studyante kung ano ba ang schedule. Predictable, stable, and there's a sense of structure for the students to follow. Even if hindi tayo nagkikita. Now, tip number two. Ano pang uh, hot tip number two ko po para sa ating lahat? Rubrics for grading. Provide a sense of structure para sa assessment nila, para sa mga assignments nila. How will I answer my assignments? Paano to? Wala si teacher. Hindi ako ma- dito siya makakausap kasi nga walang internet, walang anything. Provide them with a rubric. So alam naman po natin, refresher na po ito sa ating lahat kasi familiar naman na po tayo kung para saan ang rubric. So i-refresh ko lang naman po. Ang importante, always, pag magbibigay ng assignment, provide rubrics, provide explanations. Kung ano ba yung ideal na kalalabasan ng project nila or assignment nila okay, or homework or what or whatever. Provide them siguro with samples, the ideal um, the ideal output so that they know na, okay, ito yung expectation. So uh, now I know what to do, how to meet those standards. So for example, here, I nag-crop lang ako ng part of the rubrics that I use. Um, Siyempre, alam naman po natin na to na we have to really provide descriptions and rationale per, per point system kung uh, pa, bakit niya nakuha tong 10 points, 8 points, and, three, and 5 points. This will actually inform your feedback. Pa, paano po ang pagbibigyan natin ng feedback sa studyante natin? So, nakalagay na po dyan ng maayos. So, uh, the students, when they look at the rubrics, ah, ito yung expectation ni teacher. The teacher expects this is a perfect score. So, ito yung imimit kong standard. Okay? Para, para na, nababawasan din yung, yung anxiety, nababawasan din yung, hala, ano kayang ina-expect dito? Paano ba to? Paano ba yung gagawin dito? Nandyan ang rubrics. Again, sense of structure, sense of stability for the students. Tip number three, streamline objectives and workload. Now, to give everybody a context, in CIIT, Nung face-to-face physical classes po kami, we have 18 weeks in our trimester. I sorry po, 14 weeks as regular semester pala yun. I correct Correction, 14 weeks in our trimester. Now, because of the distance learning, uh, because of all of these uh, happenings na nangyayari, we had to really streamline objectives and workload. Kailangan namili po kami kung ano ba talaga yung pinaka-importante at yung, at yung kayang gawin through online learning. So, nabawasan ang, ang workload, nabawasan din ang, ang, ang number of weeks to nine weeks. But what was left was the most essential na kailangan matutunan na outcomes, na objectives, na um, learning competencies ng aming mga estudyante. So, as a teacher, you, you can select the learning outcomes best suited for the distance learning setup. Kaya ba to para sa distance learning? Kaya ko bang magpa, magpagawa ng, let's say, PE ka? Magpagawa ng competition, ng basketball competition using may ano? Kaya ba yon? So, we have to really adjust our objectives. Re-evaluate. Okay? So, adjust expected workload and outputs. Again, quality trumps quantity. Okay? Kahit na konti lang yan, pero kalidad po ang ating pinapagawa, the student's learning will be maximized. So we have to accept that the amount and quality of work that students can do in distance learning is now very different from what they could do in a face-to-face learning environment. So um, again, that's another assumption. Nakala natin, ah, nasa bahay lang naman yan, madali lang yan because they're at home. Okay, pero it's different. The same way that as teachers, as people working from home, it's also very different for us. How do we deliver our work, our tasks? So, nandun yung, um, nandun yung sense of empathy for our students in that sense. So, yun, empathize and reasonably adjust. And consider the fact then that we are not the only subjects, okay? Ang sudyante ay maraming subjects sa tinitake online, tapos bagong adjustment to sa kanila, and suddenly the teacher is here bombarding everybody with so many assignments, workload, and daming chat. So, Streamline objectives and workload. Again, provide your students with a sense of stability. Okay? Structure and stability. Okay? So, ma- ma- napakahalaga ang strong admin and faculty communication for those na um, administrators who are here right now. Napakahalaga na we, we come together. 
along with the faculty, um, collaborate and really talk about ano nga bang pinaka-importante sa curriculum natin and how are we going to really adjust this to the objectives na gusto natin makuha while at the same time remaining em empathic sa ating mga estudyante. Tip number four, make language accessible. Okay? In a synchronous learning environment, students will read and watch videos a lot. So, magbibigay tayo ng readings, videos, okay? Uh, kasi nga, hindi nga siya synchronous eh. Hindi nga tayo nagkikipag-usap sa mga students. So, they will really read and watch a lot of videos. So, make sure your instructions and messages are clear and understandable considering the language abilities of your learners and even their caretakers. Okay? Bakit? Especially in the lower grades, kapag may parents sila, na kailangan din na mag-assist sa students. So, so what if the, the parents themselves, hindi din nila naiintindihan ang instructions sa teachers because it's not in the language that they're used to. So, uh, I would suggest to really cater to, to your multilingual environment kung meron man po, mother tongue, if ever man you are in a place kung saan you are, you, a lot of your students are more adept at using the mother tongue. Uh, adjust natin the language, accessibility. Again, provide students with structure, um, provide them with stability, and one of those is to make the language that they are learning in more accessible to them. Okay. Lastly, tip number five. Okay. Label everything. Napakahalaga ng label. Check the label. Okay. Hindi lang po sa relasyon napaka-importante ang label, kundi sa pagtuturo din. So, label everything. Paano to? Ito yung natutunan ko kasi. Uh, hindi lang pwedeng upload lang tayo ng upload. Sabihin natin, ah, ito assignment yun na to. Okay, okay na. But, nakalabel ba ng maayos? So, this provides them with structure. Lalo na kung wala silang internet, they do not know uh, kung paano kayo ito contact. At least may label na maayos. So, provide a clear and consistent labeling system for your documents, assignments, discussion boards, announcements, lahat. May label na maayos. Okay? Hindi pwede yung... Um, or it's bad practice to just post without a title, without anything to, to, to signal to the students kung ano yun, kung para saan yun. So, labels provide effective signals for students so they know what to expect with every uploaded file or announcement a teacher gives. Okay, here's an example. Here in Canvas, I'm using Canvas, um, I have this module, the module, right? So, I have labeled here Contemporary World Class Essentials. So, lahat ng mga kailangan nila para sa klase ay nandyan. Kung ano yung URL. So, nakikita nyo po sa braces, okay, yung or brackets ba yan, may nakalagay dyang label what type of file it is. URL. So, they are signaled na link yan. It will lead them to a link, a website. And then, course orientation syllabus. So, naglagay ako ng video. Since i-explain ko yung course sa kanila, i-explain ko yung syllabus, I made a video. So, nakalabel. Syllabus, nakalabel din. Textbooks and references, nakalabel. Aware sila na textbook to, textbook to, textbook ito. So, they know kung anong gagamitin na references for the class. Another example, let's say lesson. Nasa week 2 kami, kunwari, sa contemporary world. Now, the student opens this. In-upload ko lahat. Okay? Wala silang access kay teacher. They cannot contact me. They don't have internet. Pero nakita nila to. So, how do they um, decipher this? Nakalagay na po dyan. Alam nila na article to, article. Alam nila na video. Okay? Alam nila na discussion number two, ito. So that when they look in the syllabus, nakalagay doon, ah, discussion two. This is discussion two. And alam nila kung saan yung recorded lectures and presentations. They know what to expect. Structure, predictability, stability for your students during this time. So let's review, okay? Review po natin yung mga tips natin. Okay? Again, key concept. Paulit-ulit ko pong uh, reiterate structure. Napaka-importante ng structure in asynchronous setups. Okay? So, take note of the time frame. Provide a clear, consistent schedule that students can expect, students can anticipate, students can predict. Rubrics. Something the students, the standards that students will meet so that they know what to expect sa kanilang final output. Streamline objectives and workload. Okay? Hindi, um, quality is more important than quantity. Kahit na ang dami-dami nyo binibigay sa estudyante, but it's not really something, it's not going to be effective if um, bombarded sila, pagod sila. Okay? 
and make language accessible, siguraduhin na iintindihan po ng estudyante kung anong instructions ninyo sa sinulat po ninyo. So, maybe you can adjust to the mother tongue or maybe you can write in bilingual. English and Filipino translations. Label everything. Label, 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 label. Lahat yan may label. Okay? So, that is for planning, structuring, asynchronous classroom courses, activities, and subjects. I hope na may nakakuha po kayo ng some of the principles na pwede nating gamitin para sa ating mga classrooms. Now, I, I would like to move on to the next part. Okay? How to monitor students' works. Okay? Lalo na kung asynchronous. Hindi natin sila nakikita. Hindi natin sila nakakausap face-to-face. -face. How do we know that our students are actually working? How do we know na, oh, ginagawa ba niya yung project niya? Ginagawa ba niya yung assignment niya? Okay. What I will share to you is my personal strategy. So, I use this strategy para sa mga long-term projects. Uh, for example, meron akong, let's say, example lang to. In my class, I'm requiring you to submit at the end of the SEM, sa dulo, ang biggest project na kailang ang gagawin nyo for the class, you will make a short film. Okay, kunwari, short film ang pinaka-project ng estudyante. But how do you know na during the entire duration, ginagawa ng estudyante? Lalo na kung hindi naman kayo nag-meet sa classroom. Lalo na kung hindi naman kayo nag-uusap. Well, what I use is uh, as for monitoring are called progress reports. Okay? These are documents. Okay? Nakasulat ng, uh, the students will write this. So, the progress reports are submitted every two to three weeks or depende po sa time frame na sinet ninyo. In my case, every two to three weeks. Okay? Uh, it, it contains details about the status of students' projects. Okay, bakit po pinapagawa to? Because it teaches students to set goals. Okay? May, may self, uh, self goal setting sila to work in manageable chunks na hindi siya ikakram. Okay? Kasi, kasi alam, alam ng estudyante may ine-expect si teacher na output after two to three weeks no matter how big or small that output is. And it, and it also encourages students to take ownership and accountability for their work. Okay? Wala silang ibang sisisihin because they know the expectation. They know ano ba dapat yung gagawin. So, Ano bang meron sa progress report? It's just a document na pwedeng isulat ng estudyante, submit after a few weeks or so. Um, what goals in your project have you accomplished in the last two weeks or one week or kung ano mang time frame yan? So, ano mga natapos mo? Sir, natapos ko na po yung pag-shoot ng mga videos. Sir, natapos ko na po yung mga uh, pagkuha ng pictures para sa, uh, para sa short film. So, very good. May nagawa ka. Kahit pa unti-unti. What difficulties and challenges did you face? Dito, I'm giving my students a time to rant, to mag-express. Sir, ang hirap, sir, kasi nasa, nasa bahay lang ako, hindi ako makalabas dahil natatakot ako sa COVID or, sir, uh, ganito. And then, dyan papasok yung monitoring. Nakikita mo yung lived experiences ng estudyante natin because they can express it to you. And dyan, dyan din yung signal po sa atin na, ops, kailangan ng intervention ng estudyante. Okay? And then, you can also look here, what are your project goals for the next two weeks? Para bilang teacher, you know, ito yung i-expect ko sa output mo pagdating ng sunod na progress report. Para paunti-unti, nagagawa ng student yung work nila independently. Okay, provide evidence o picturean mo, mag-attach ka ng picture, sample, yung draft ng sinusulat mo or whatnot. Okay? Okay, so pwede yan. Or pwede yung simpleng text. Okay? Parang, ma'am, sir, ito po yung natapos ko. Ito po yung ginagawa ko. Medyo nahirapan nga po kasi ako dahil dito. Kung walang internet, pwedeng text. Kung walang computer, you can pangitext ka na lang. Pwede yun. So this, this provides teachers with material. Like I said, that will help as well in the mental and emotional well-being of students. Again, we are going to re-evaluate our roles as teachers in this asynchronous distance learning setup. Hindi lang tayo nagtuturo. Okay, hindi lang tayo nagbibigay ng knowledge, but at the same time, we are also nurturing the well-being of our students. And one way is to monitor through progress reports. And non-submission of progress reports or kung may mga, mga, concern, mga uh, cause for concern na sinulat doon, it also is a signal for the teacher na, hala, hindi ka nagsasubmit ng progress report. Nagagawa ba niya yung project? Nahihirapan ba siya? Anong pwedeng itulong? Intervention na agad. Okay? Para ma-address yung potential student issues. Progress reports for monitoring. Lastly, the last part, 
is assessment and evaluation tips okay, for asynchronous learning. So kanina we talked about monitoring. Paano naman pag mag evaluate na tayo ng gawa ng estudyante? Nandiyan na, assignment to submit, project na submit. How do we evaluate? So, um, ang pinaka-tip ko lang dyan, like I said, hindi ako magbibigay ng specific strategies, but something to enhance para pagandahin, mas, ma mag mas maging um, may quality ang ating um, assessment feedback. For every single work that a teacher grades, as much as possible, provide consistent and constructive feedback. Hindi yung oh, 10 points, tapos na, disagree ko na. Next. But what about it? How will the students know where they were wrong or where they got it right? Lalo na hindi tayo nakikita. Asynchronous nga eh. So, teachers, uh, kung kaya natin bigyan ng effort pa, uh, feedback. Okay? Um, kaya nga importante na streamline yung subject workload po natin. Kasi nga, uh, it also helps us manage our time. Uh, manage po ano nga ba yung mga, mga requirements na pwede natin pagfokusan to focus on these um, 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 assignments, projects, and whatnot. Kasi kung ang dami-dami po natin pinapagawa, talagang mahirapan po tayo magbigay ng feedback. So, effective feedback is produced within a reasonably set time frame. Kasi nga, let's say, uh, magbigay si teacher ng assignment week 1 and then week 2, nagsabit yung mga sadyante. So, bigyan nyo si teacher ng ano, bigyan nyo pong sarili ninyo ng one week in between para magbigay ng feedback para by week three, may kopya po yung sudyante ng feedback. So, may reasonable set time at i-expect ng sudyante at this time may feedback mula kay teacher. Okay, so again, it's one of the best ways for students to feel their teacher's presence. Again, hindi tayo nagkikita. So, how do, I, how do you make your presence felt to students? Feedback, it shows that you care. It shows na may pakialam ka sa ginawa niya. Hindi ka lang nagpasubmit. Talagang binasa po natin, talagang scrutinize po natin, at may pakialam po tayo sa kalidad ng kanilang ginagawa. And feedback then it's also um, sa mga, kunari, nagsabit ang sudyante sa email. Very important to reply. Noted, got it, nakuha ko na yung nasubmit mo. Thank you for working on your project. Kasi kung nagsub nagpasubmit ka sa sudyante at hindi ka nagreply, hindi ka man lang nagbigay ng... Um, noted or what not, ma-anxious yung student. Parang has, nakuha ba ni teacher? Uh, may mali ba sa pag-send ko or what not? So, the, the consistent feedback is very important to make your presence felt to your students. Pero paano kung ang dami mong studyante? Okay? What if, wala sir, nakilap naman po niyan. Di, naman, di, naman, di ko naman kaya na isa-isahin ko yung studyante ko kasi ang dami nila. Promise, sobrang dami. So, what I do in my class is that I personally use a method of checking all students' works. So, check ko po muna lahat yan. Check lahat. And I take note of all the good points and the points for improvement. What do I do next? I then write isang mahabang document siguro or maybe record kung uh, mas gusto nyo nag-record ng video o, o boses. So that all students can access and compare to their work. So, it's a general feedback para sa lahat taking into account the common mistakes, the common, uh, what do you call this, the common um, points for improvement, and even the good and commendable parts of their work. So you don't have to go to them one by one, but you can just produce one general feedback accessible to all. Okay. Pero, siyempre, um, kung talagang kailangan na kailangan po natin magbigay ng feedback sa isang sudyante or individually, um, you're free to do so. We are free to do so. So for example, I made this um, discussion board. Okay. So this does the discussion board we're talking about the sociological imagination. So now I give them, diba, uh, sabi ko, read this, and then ito yung document, and then discuss the following questions. So may one, two, three, and four questions that they have to discuss. Now, after they submitted everything, gumawa po ako ng um, recording. I recorded my feedback, binasa ko lahat ng discussion points nila, I got all, it, all of it, I recorded the feedback, Okay, so discussion one, sociological imagination feedback, and I sent it to my students via Google Drive. Para nandun siya lahat. Para um, as soon as I finish checking, I give feedback, the students can listen or watch or read their feedback. It's all there. So that's how I, that, that's how I do it in my experience. So it depends on your personal strategy. It depends on your technological limitations, capabilities, and all those things. So let's review this next, this, the last part of our talk before we conclude. Uh, monitor students, 
ang strategy po na inintroduce ko, progress reports, and then next assessment and evaluation tips, feedback is a must, and possibly po mag-record at magbigay ng um, feedback for efficient dissemination to all students concerned. So yan. So we talked about um, the, the programs, the apps we can use. We talked about structuring. Again, the key concept, structure, predictability, stability for our students. And lastly, we talked about monitoring and assessment and evaluation. So in conclusion, um, all of these are, siyempre, they're coming from a, a position of experience. Uh, this I've only been doing this ngayong 2020 lang. Okay? I am fairly new to it. And this is coming from a, a, a position kung saan I share in your struggles, our struggle as teachers or as educators na la, lahat tayo nangangapa, naninibago sa bagong struktura ng distance learning. And all of these came from a lot of trials and errors. And I'm not saying that these are the perfect methods. These, aren't, these, are, these are the methods that work for me. But um, it's very, I encourage everybody to be very uh, explorative, um, curious sa pag-implement ng iba't ibang strategies pagdating sa um, asynchronous online learning. And I really thank uh, Brilliant Creations for providing uh, us this opportunity to share all of these things with you. And I really hope that a lot of you have um, learned something and uh, got the general principle or the gist of what I've been presenting. And onwards po, uh, Pat, patungo sa mas uh, mas magandang edukasyon para sa mga mga estudyante natin at uh, para sa mas maganda better new normal. Marami pong salamat. Thank you po for listening. This I Michael Pahariel from CII. Thank you po. Thank you Sir Michael. So I hope uh, everyone has um, been taking down notes and taking down your questions also no for later. So this is just the first part no for this is the asynchronous part of our webinar. Our next speaker is Sir Patrick, who will discuss us uh, synchronous, naman, no? And then, um, all right. I hope everyone had uh, was able to take advantage of the short break. So our next speaker is also an instructor from CIIT. It's also a social science instructor, Mr. Patrick Pineda. Sir Patrick. Yes, hello. Good afternoon po. Yes. Um, can you see the slide? Please? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. Okay, um, thank you so much to Brilliant. Um, Brilliant Creations Publishing for this opportunity. And um, it's very nice that we had how many? 70 participants around right now. And ayan po. Um... For today's topic, um, nag-usap po kasi kami ni Michael kung anong gagawin namin. So, what I'll be discussing today is synchronous learning. So, when we talk about synchronous learning, it's essentially um, live. So, like what we're doing right now. So, nakaharap ako sa inyo sa camera and all those things. Um, just a little anecdote about synchronous learning. Um, medyo na problema po ako sa uh, synchronous learning kasi... Um, for synchronous learning, like what we're doing right now, kailangan nakaharap ka sa camera, you have to look presentable, and you have to have a nice background. So for example, right here, uh, inayos ko yung kwarto ko para maayos yung background natin. Um, so sometimes it, it gets distracting also to students, for example, na, uh, for example, the lecture ka, biglang may tatakbo aso sa likod mo, or maingay sa paligid mo. So, it's very important that there's also a presence of mind in synchronous learning. So, I entitled this presentation as Towards a Better Normal. So, we're not just aiming to have a new normal, we're aiming towards a better normal. Okay, so let's start. So, like I said, um, learning has moved virtually because of the pandemic. So, we're forced to have our classes done online. So, we have to concede to the fact na hindi tayo babalik ng school within this year. Like what President Duterte said in one of his speeches, um, I think two weeks ago, without any vaccine, we won't be returning to school. So, we are now forced to have um, alternatives. How do we continue learning for our students? And that is also a challenge for us. Kasi 
when ECQ was imposed, of course, um, syempre lahat din naman po nagulat, no? I myself was surprised na iuwi ko lang dito sa bahay was my work laptop, some of the books and references that I was using na iwan ko pa sa school. So, how do we adapt? And how have our students adapted to the new normal? Because, of course, um, hindi lang naman tayo nag adjust Our students also. So, I have three observations with regards to our students. So, the first one is that students are visual. Well, um, this has been a given observation, no? Um, even in face-to-face classes. Mas gusto nila na nakikita nila at napapanood nila yung kailangan nilang matutunan. If you notice, like, if you integrate a YouTube video, for example, um, they're more interested in that. Kesta yung magsalita ka ng magsalita in the classroom, for example. The second one is that students are multitaskers. So, we have to remember that since we moved online, most of our students are multitasking. We are just one tab among many in their browser. So, for example, um, I had this experience with one student. Um, nag-lecture ako ng live. Tapos, at the same time, he's also doing his artwork. Kasi some of my students are multimedia arts, so they're also doing their artwork. So what they're doing is essentially, they're just listening to me. And they will only engage with me if they have questions. So the challenge there is that, how do we engage with our students? Especially kung iisang tab lang tayo among many. So we have to face that reality. And finally, Students are more likely to get distracted at home kasi iba yung environment, iba yung environment ng school. Like I said earlier, um, there's a change of environment, you have to adjust like tayo. Pag nagtuturo tayo, um, especially now that we're now at home, we have to dedicate some space in order to reduce distractions, for example. The same way with our students. If they are at home, they are most likely to get distracted because some of them, of course, hindi naman sila nag-on ng camera or bihira, no? Some of them are having their lessons while nakahiga sa kama, for example. Uh, I had this one student. Uh, pag nag-lecture daw ako, nasa kusina siya kasi nagluluto siya, for example. So, they are more likely to get distracted. But let's always remember that there are factors that are way beyond our control. But what are the factors that we can control if they are distracted? Okay. So, another question for us teachers is that, how do we bring our flavor or our teaching style online? Because each teacher has a unique teaching style. We have our own flavor, we have our own signature method of how to teach the subject. So, ang tanong doon, paano po natin siya dadalhin online? Kasi, for example, um, di ba, kung nakikipag-chismisan po kayo sa mga estudyante niyo, no? Oo. Sir, si ganito po ba stricto? Uh, hindi ko masasabi kasi hindi ako estudyante niya. Katrabaho ko siya. So, syempre, iba yung relationship na magkatrabaho sa teacher and student, for example. Sir, si ganito po ba, ano, pag nagtuturo po ba siya, boring po siya. Hindi ko masasabi. But, may mga ganong kwento, syempre, mga estudyante natin sa atin na, ah, si ganito, pag nagtuturo yan, sobrang active niyan. Sobrang saya sa klase niyan. Ah, si ganito, sobrang stricto niyan. So, ang question ngayon is, how do we bring our teaching style online? Because this is very important. Um, because one um, in face-to-face classes, teacher factor is one. In online classes, teacher factor is also counted. So there are some teachers, for example, na uh, sa face-to-face, nagbabasa ng PowerPoint, and then wala explanation. Pwede niya din yun gawin online. Because for example, ako. Natamad ako magturo, for example. Uh, okay, ito yung PowerPoint ko. Mag-record ako. Tapos, babasahin ko lang yung PowerPoint ko. And that's it. Bahala na yung estudyante. Sometimes, you have to change that. Because we have to remember that um, we are in very different circumstances and not everyone can follow. So, that is one thing that we have to remember. So, Additional questions, because we're now having a virtual classroom, essentially. So, if you're having a virtual classroom, like, for example, sa Zoom, like what we're using right now, or Google Meet, this is essentially the virtual classroom. So, it's going beyond. Mm-hmm. So, 
first question, what are the rituals in the classroom that we can do online? Amin niyo man po o hindi, lahat po tayo may rituals as teachers. So, diba sa atin, um, uupo muna sa likod habang naghihintay ng estudyante, makipagkwentuhan. Ako personally, may ritual in the classroom. Alam naman to ng mga estudyante ko. And alam din to ng head ko. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Sir Castle. Um, one of the rituals in the classroom, especially if I arrive early in the morning, tapos nakita ko, lilima pa lang sila, in-on ko yung TV, nagpapatugtog ako. Kasi sometimes, di ba, music has this feeling of uh, para magising yung diwa nila, for example. And that, I also do it now online. So, I usually log on to my virtual classroom 10 minutes or 5 minutes before I start my classes. Then, papatugtog lang ako. Then, mostly na pinapatugtog ko kung ano din yung type ng mga estudyante ko. So, usually it's K-pop because I also listen to K-pop. So, papatugtog ako noon. Then, I also do that after my class para some of them will stay or whatever. So, that is one classroom ritual that I subscribe to. The next one, which is more serious of course, what are the topics that we can compress in a 30-minute or an one-hour long lecture? And what are the resources that we can use? Because, um, for example, us in college, um, nasanay po kami na ang klase po namin apat na oras or three hours sometimes, three to four hours. So, naging challenge po sa amin na paano ko ba i-adapt yung syllabus ko to online learning na you are limited to one hour of live interaction and the rest are done asynchronously. So, ano yung mga topics na pwede mong i-discuss in 30 minutes? Ano yung topics na pwede mong i-discuss in just one hour? So, you have to remember that and you have to take note of that because most probably, the topics that you can discuss in 30 minutes to an hour, you can do that online. The rest of the topics, you can do that offline or asynchronously as Sir Michael has said earlier. Then what are the activities that we can give to students that can be done online or synchronously? Because nagiging challenge po sa atin ngayon na wala tayo sa classroom. So aside sa mahirap pa pag engage sa mga estudyante, mahirap din mag-isip ng activities na pwede nating gawin online. So ano ba yung pwede nating gawin na tututok sila sa atin and at the same time, they will not get distracted by other tabs. For example, Facebook or their Twitter accounts or whatever. So, ayan. So, ano po yung ginagawa ko usually when I enter the virtual classroom? So, quote-unquote, kasi nag-a-adjust pa din tayo, no? So, it's important to remember that you are still in the classroom, although virtually and mediated by technology. That's why I said earlier, no pisa, importante po na kahit online po tayo, so maayos po yung itsura natin. After all, we're still teachers, right? Maayos po yung background natin. We have to ensure that at least the environment around us has less distractions, for example. And then when you enter the virtual classroom, so Hindi man kailangan formal na formal na, okay, pagka-log in mo, okay, good morning class, so today we will be discussing ganito, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Hindi, mo, hindi naman ganun. So, you start with a simple greeting. So, pwede naman kayo makipagkwentuhan sa mga estudyante. So, kumusta hindi sila? So, kumusta ECQ? Kumusta mga pamilya nyo? Okay lang ba kayo? Because it gives a personal touch um, for us, teachers, kasi lahat naman tayo nahihirapan. Aminin natin. Our students are not spared the dif- uh, difficulties of the quarantine situation. So, it helps if we ask them na, kumusta kayo? Um, kumusta yung naging experience nyo ng ECQ? So, may pagwento ka kayo ng konti. Kasi it sets the atmosphere of the classroom also. It's also important that you have to be creative in your virtual classroom. So, like, what I said earlier, for example, ako, nagpapatugtog ako ng music. So, sometimes it's K-pop, sometimes it's OPM. Basta alam kong uso na music ngayon, pinapatugtog ko siya. So, para kami nasa, ano, sabi nga ng isang studyante ko, sir, para tayong nasa radio show, no? Tapos may didiscuss ka lang. So, naisip ko bigla, oo nga, no? So, if you have time this afternoon or this evening, try listening to a radio show. 
I think it helps also because when you listen to a radio show, that's um, that's how you keep engaged also with your students. Because say, you play music, then you discuss something. Pa, isipin yon na you're a teacher and you're also a radio host. So kung pangarap niyo po maging ano artista sa radio or sa TV noon, so ito na po yung pagkakataon para gawin yon. So how do we begin the lesson? So like Sir Michael said, it's important you have a structure of everything. So you outline the flow of the lesson and the objectives of each ses- session. And assuming also that you are on blended learning mode. So for example, in the synchronous lessons, ano yung pwede natin gawin? Ano yung gagawin natin ngayon sa synchronous session? So, in the lecture lang ba ako? Mag small group discussions ba tayo? Or meron ba tayong chat na gagawin? So you outline it. Outline everything. So this is what we will be doing in this session. Asynchronously, this is what we will be doing. So structure is very important. And then, what are the objectives of the live session? So, for example, in my case, since I teach philosophy this term, and as we know, um, philosophy is one of the difficult humanities subjects that we have right, uh, in the curriculum. So, our expectations now, Sujante, is that in the lecture, I will be giving an overview of the topic. So, just the overview. I'll have a little lecture, then I'll answer some questions live. For the asynchronous session, they are expected to read and to do some self-assessment activities, for example. So, it's very important na nakahiwalay siya. Okay, ano gagawin natin for this hour? Anong gagawin niyo for this subject asynchronously? So, para alam ni student kung ano yung expectations natin sa kanila. Okay? Then, aside from lectures, so one hour man yan, or 40 minutes, or two hours, there are activities that can be done online to encourage participation. And we will be discussing two of the tools that we usually use in the with my students for those um, activities. Okay, so we now proceed to tools for synchronous learning. Of course, the most important tools that we have are the meeting apps. So we have Zoom and we have Google Meet. In our case, in CIIT, we use Google Meet because we have an active institutional subscription. So, ano po yung pinagkaiba nung dalawa? So, for Zoom, that, like what we're using right now, um, what is good with Zoom is that it has breakout sessions for group work and discussion. So, if you are planning to have um, a little group work for your students, I suggest that you use Zoom. But one limitation of Zoom is that um, it's limited to 40 minutes for the free uh, account. I'm not sure if um, school, if your schools have an account. Um, ako kasi I'm using the free version. So, it's limited to 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, you have to use a new link again and then you will proceed with the breakout sessions. So, as the teacher, if you're the host and you like have a breakout session, um, you can go in sa breakout rooms and then you can check there if the students are really discussing or nagchichismisan sila or they're doing something differently. Then we have Google Meet that what we're using in CIIT right now. So Google Meet is more secure because of the features that it has na end-to-end encryption, I think. It's free to use also if you have an active Google account and your school has Google accounts. It's free to use for you and it has no time limits. And then, when you do the recording in Google Meet, um, the recordings are uploaded to the drive within an hour of the recording. And what is also important in both Zoom and Google Meet is that you have to save the chats. Why? Because the group chats are very important in the sense that students post their questions there. So, kung meron pa yung nakita na pattern doon na, ah, dito sa ano na to. When I was discussing this topic, medyo na mada, dumami yung questions. So, that is one thing, that's one topic that you have to reiterate. For example, one um, good um, use also of the group chats is that you can also use group chats for feedback. Aside from looking at, sa ba sila nahirapan, any questions nila because the questions that they are giving are most probably the questions that we that the other sections or the other sessions will be giving so that you can anticipate the questions early on 
Um, this one is this is more in the asynchronous um, sessions, but we also do this for synchronous learning. So, like for CIIT, we use Canvas, and some schools use Google Classroom. So, ano yung synchronous element ng Canvas and Google Classroom? Um, what we're using right now here is what we call as the discussion boards. The discussion boards are, in my case, for example, I just post one to two questions and I let the students discuss. Okay, okay, for this week, let's say, magpo-post ako ng question. Um, what makes a good artist or what makes a good programmer? And what does practice play into um, being a good artist or a good programmer? Then I let my students discuss. So, sasagot sila dun sa questions na yun. Like, it's like a forum. If you're using forums, if you're familiar with Reddit, it's like that. Um, so, they discuss sila dun. Uh, sir, for me personally, being a good artist is because of the technique. Or being a good artist is because of the materials that the artist uses, for example. And then, while they are answering, you can engage with them. Okay. Balik tayo sa sinagot na isa. Uh, kunwari, sinagot niya na technique. So, ako, I can reply to it instantly. Okay, what makes... Um, anong meron sa technique that makes a good artist, for example. So, um, you can reply to it in real time. But again, um, since this is more attuned also for asynchronous learning, some of your students will be answering usually during off hours. Uh, for example, some of my students, they love answering the discussion boards at 1 o'clock in the morning for some reason. <laughs> and then finally, we have our two favorite um, tools for synchronous learning. We have Mentimeter. It's an interactive presentation software used for live surveys. So it has tools, for example, such as the Likert scale, um, word clouds, for example. I'll be showing a sample of the screen later. And then ito yung pinakapaborito ng mga estudyante namin. I think Sir Michael also uses this. Um, Kahoot. So this is used for quizzes. Um, Kahoot is, um, pwede siya sa laptop, pwede din siya as a phone app. So, um, the questions will flash on screen and the students will have to tap the color or the shape of the answer that they think is right. So, one limitation of Kahoot nga lang is that for free accounts, it can only accommodate up to 50 users. So, it's done in real time. So, you can see kung sino yung tama ang sagot, sino yung mali ang sagot. So, this is one example of sa Mentimeter. So, in one session, I think I was discussing Aristotle in this session in the, ver- uh, the notion of happiness in philosophy. So, I asked my students, what is happiness? So, I told them, okay, go to menti.com and use the code. So, they went there and then lalabas sa screen is that um, happiness is and there's a blank. And they will input their answers. And in real time, you will be seeing their answers. So, for example, nakita dyan, oh, satisfaction, contentment. Ayan, meron isa dyan, uh, parcel is being delivered. So, fan ng Shopee ata at Lazada at online shopping. Oh, oh. Then, happiness is being contented. Happiness is important, for example. So, you can see their answers. And there is engagement between the teacher and the student. And... Of course, this is just a tool. This is not the end of the discussion. So this is just a tool in order to ask your students and, and also for you to use it as a launching pad for the discussions that you will be having in the latter part of the session. Ito naman po yung sa Kahoot. So, um, tawag dito. So magpa-flash si question sa taas. And then there are colors and shapes that are associated with the answer. So, for example, what civilization or civilizations did the Greek civilization develop from? So, this is world history. So, you have the Minoans, the Mayans, the Philippians, and the British. So, the correct answer, of course, is the Minoans. So, kaya siya may check because as the teacher or as the host, you can control kung kailan mag-a-appear yung tamang sagot. So, you let the students answer first. Kung baga may, ano yan eh, may competition yan, padamihan ng mga sagot, and, oo. Tapos, they will be surprised na all this time, mali pala yung sinagot nila, and all those things. Ayan. So, let me give you one sample of synchronous and asynchronous activities that I was doing in my classes. So, 
this is one sample. This is week seven from the ethics syllabus because I'm teaching ethics right now. So, week seven, we'll be discussing applied ethics. So, justice, fairness, and equality. So, what we call as social and political ethics. So, nandiyan din yung objectives ng um, session. But you look at the synchronous sessions. So, you have a live webinar and discussion. So, for that week, we will be having one-hour session. And webinar, kasi ganito yung format niya, discussion, because I'm replying to their chats in real time. So, for example, they have sir clarifications po, or I have a question. So, I reply to them in real time. There are also small group discussions planned for this one. So, the small group discussions, these are usually done in the what we call as the mentoring sessions because one aspect of our synchronous sessions, aside from the lectures, is that we also have coaching sessions or consultations. In my case, I do it in small groups because of the number of the students that I have. And it can be also done individually. But in my case, I do it in small groups so that we can discuss like um, supplements to the lesson, for example. Um, sorry, may hindi ako maintindihan sa reading. Pwede po ba makapag-consult sa inyo? Sure, go ahead. So, they apply for a session. They just book an appointment using Google or Canvas. And then we also have the Canvas discussion board. So, I just post the question there and I let them discuss. So, it's just like the Facebook comment section. But the good thing there is that kalmado naman po sila. And these um, discussions are moderated. And then finally, kung makikita nyo po dyan, meron po ako nilagay dyan, na Netflix party. Netflix party discussion. Um, I use Netflix for some um, lessons. So, for example, in that um, in that session, I'll be using one episode of Black Mirror. It's a series in Netflix and we'll be using the Netflix party. Ano po yung Netflix party? Um, it's an extension in Google Chrome that enables... Uh, participants, a host and participants to watch a, an episode at the same time and there is also a group chat. So, kung nari, may nangyari sa episode, pwede nyo siya i-discuss in real time. So, we will be doing this in week 7. And aside from the synchronous, so we have the asynchronous um, aspect, so readings, and then kung hindi sila nakasama sa Netflix party, they can watch the Black Mirror episode and the handouts. So, ano po yung tips natin when we when we do the synchronous activities, so I got this one from Caitlin Tucker. She's a Google innovator for education. But I'll be also using some tip. I'll be giving some tips as well. So the first one is to provide our students with an agenda and a list of discuss, discussion questions. So again, it's very important that you have a structure for the sessions that you have. What are your expectations? What are your objectives? Ano ba yung idi-discuss natin? So, kung ano man po yung nasa lesson plan natin, i-discuss natin sa bata. Ano ba yung gagawin natin for this? You know? Second one is that you communicate your expectations for participation and behavior online. Because, um, like in this webinar, for example, before we start, we, before we started this webinar, we have our class, we had our rules na kailangan lahat na ka-mute and then make sure that your names are displayed, for example, para madaling tawagin. So, ganun po yung, at the start of the session, usually I, I do it in the first week of classes. Ano expectations ko sa inyo? And then, you invite also students to generate their own discussion questions. Kasi sometimes, we overlook na daldal tayo nung daldal. There are some aspects pala of the topic that we have missed. Diba? So, ano yung pwedeng i-discuss din ng students? Kasi, in, uh, mas maganda po, if we have also, if we give our students the opportunity to discuss also. Like yesterday, I had a student, um, nag-volunteer naman siya, thank God, um, nag-discuss naman siya, kasi we were discussing um, virtue ethics, which is based on religion. So, I discussed it from different perspectives, and then nag-discuss siya, sa, um, yeah, sir, um, from our perspective po kasi ganito, so, bigay siya na examples and yan. And it's good because it means that I had this student discuss among and with his peers. Number five. So, uh, number four, papala, sorry. So, so, start every virtual conferencing session with an icebreaker. So, like I said earlier, it can be music, it can be an activity like Mentimeter or Kahoot, 
or whatever fits your teaching style because I understand that most of you um, we have our own different teaching styles so in my case I use music nagpapatugtog ako ng music number five you use the chat window strategically so you give the students a signal when they can use the chat box for questions because um, like right now I'm discussing with you I cannot see the chat box. So if you have questions, I might have missed it. So we'll use it um, during the Q&A. Host shorter sessions with fewer students. This is good for mentoring and coaching sessions. So fewer students meaning, let's say, as little as five students and as siguro maximum na yung eight to ten students para um, you can address specific questions. And then finally, you ask your students to assess their participation online. In my case, I use a self-assessment question, which they will be submitting to me at the end of the term. So, ano po yung ginagawa namin sa self-assessment? Um, I give the self-assessment question online while the, we're doing the live session. And they have the whole week to answer those self-assessment questions. And if they like, they can discuss it with me during consultation. So, what are my personal tips naman? So, ayan. Again, let me reiterate, we are still in the classroom, albeit virtually and mediated by technology. So, what we're doing is that, tutulong pa rin naman po tayo, pero iba lang yung medium natin in using teaching. So, let's make our lessons conversational because we assume that most information are already in the modules. Again, let us talk to our students. So, makipag-usap po tayo. Like, let's say, nakikita natin sa chat sila, may question sila. Sagutin, kung kaya po natin, sagutin po kagad natin. And let's make it conversational. Let's not be stiff in presenting our lessons. Kasi, after all, we are at home. Our students are at home. And most of them probably are doing it a very relaxed manner. So, relax lang po tayo. Oo. It's very important. Communication skills are also important, ha? So, kaya nga, I... I said here that yung, let's make our lessons conversational. Kasi sometimes we forget na dahil nakaharap po tayo sa screen, nakakalimutan po natin na meron pong nanonood sa atin. So, kumbaga, sabi ko nga sa mga estudyante ko, makipagwentuhan lang naman ako sa inyo. Kasi most of the most of the learning materials, I assume, are uploaded also online. So, they, all, they now have the time to read, to digest the lesson, and then you come back na Sir, hindi ko po na-gets. Um, ano po yung ibig sabihin nung sa readings na ganito? Now we're talking. Kasi in the consultation sessions, it is the student who is driving the conversation. So, like I said, yan nga. Um, dedicate your time for answering questions and clarifications. So, if your schedule permits, you have you also have a dedicated time for consultation and mentoring. Because mentoring and consultation, especially in the setup that we have right now, it's very important. Because let us consider that our students who have problems at home especially, um, they have no one to talk to. So sometimes they will be opening up. Or sometimes they will be asking us about the tips na, uh, Sir, paano po ba pag online learning? Kasi in one consultation I had, this was the first week of classes, sabi sa akin ng isang student ko, Sir, paano po ginagawa niyo pag online learning? So sabi ko, I dedicate time for it. So for this uh, for this hour for example sabi ko ganito yung gagawin ko this um the next um hour etong subject na to because for grad school we'll be starting our classes on saturday ganun din naman yung ginagawa ko diba so it's um it's giving tips to our students and like i said earlier in mentoring and consultation sessions it is the student who will drive the discussion so for example may nagpa-schedule po ng mentoring sa akin or consultation. The first question to the student is this. So, okay, ano pag-uusapan natin today? Kasi in consultation, it is not me who will be driving the discussion. It is the student. ba? So, dito din po natin ma-assess kung meron po talagang natutunan ang bata. Then finally, let's remember that it is always a partnership built on trust between the teacher the student and the parents because um, we often for uh, we often look at it as teacher and student lang. let us also engage the parents of our students 
with regards to online learning kasi tulong-tulong po tayo dito. Um, this will only succeed if we allow ourselves to succeed as well. So this is teamwork. This is bayanihan at its finest. Then, one final tip siguro, let's be creative. Kung kailangan yung sumayaw sa harap ng camera, why not? Diba? Let's be creative in making our students engaged online. And then, ask, and let's also be creative in presenting our lessons online. In fact, the internet has a wealth of resources. There's YouTube, diba? Let's admit it, some of them will be watching YouTube para lang mag-gets yung lessons natin sometimes. So, Diba? You use Netflix, you use Spotify because it's all there. And we just have to take those resources into our hands. So, that ends my session. So, thank you so much and maraming salamat po. Thank you, Sir Patrick. I just wanna ano, comment lang dun sa Zoom, no? Um, I think, ano, Zoom has, uh, diba, we know that Zoom has the 40-minute limitation for for the session. Pero if you schedule it, nawawala yung limitation na yun. So if you you use the schedule meeting instead of just starting a meeting, nawawala yung 40 minute um, limit, yung time limit. So noted on that. <laughs> yes. And then as as for the link, you can reuse the link. You don't need to set up a new link every time. Actually the ang ang alam ko, the link um, you can reuse the link as long as you use it. Tapos mag-expire lang siya after 30 days if it's unused. But as long as you keep using it, you can just use the same link for all your sessions. Yeah, it's the same with Google Meet. So, there's a yeah. permanent link for it. Yeah. So, yun. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, Sir Patrick. And dami natin. I hope everyone um, picked up a lot of tips from that. And I hope you, you use this time, the remaining time that we have to, to ask your questions for some more um, clarifications. Sir, yung question ko is, yung Kahoot, what are the limitations for that for a free account? Aside from the 50 users. Um, so far, yun lang naman po. Kasi, well, if you want to upgrade to the basic account bayon, it's, I think, $3 monthly. Um, tataas siya to uh, 100 participants. But for one limitation aside from the number of participants is that kumabagal yung internet on one end, uh, medyo mabagal mag-load yung questions yes. ng sa bata. Pero about yung ano, number of quizzes that you can set up? I'm not so sure about the number of quizzes. Mas madalas po si Sir Michael ang gumagamit. Oh, okay. Pero, so, I tried it twice. I'm, if I'm not... Yeah, I tried it twice. So, okay pa naman siya. Sir Michael... <laughs> Maybe you have some kahoot. Uh, so far, ano, uh, wala akong experience na, na nalimitahan po ako sa paggamit ng kahoot. Kasi oh. ano po eh, usually, usually we make new quizzes for every um, icebreaker kasi iba-iba po naman yung context. So um, sa kahoot, mali, um, it's very rare that I reuse a quizzes. So uh, I don't really run into the problem of limitations or limits. Okay. And then dun yeah. sa Netflix party, sinisync niya bale yung Netflix ng mga users? Is that what it does? Yes. Um, so, sa Netflix party, it's a Chrome extension. So, there's this one host who has the access to the Netflix account and then you can invite friends ah, or students. So, so, the students don't need to have their own Netflix account? Yeah. Then, tapos oh, sa gilid like, So, like, like sa Zoom, pero naka Netflix siya. So you can react in real time. Nice. Okay. Yes. That's good. So that's, a, used, that's another good tip. I used tip. that once. Great. Um, and then I think magandang ano yun, no? magandang tip from from Sir Patrick yung radio show no, lalo na yung mga radio talk shows kasi usually they have segments, they have yes, um, so. di ba may mga games sila minsan phone in topic or call siguro baka pwedeng gamitin yung mga ganong classic techniques for the synchronous sessions that's true kasi um, ako naman po what i listen uh, what i usually listen to our podcasts yes oh sa spotify there are podcasts so mm-hmm. sabi ko if i can learn this while listening this can be also effective to students especially if they are distracted by numerous tabs for example so right. yeah so 
one uh, good listening practice then is also key. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm looking forward to your questions na. If, if there are questions. Wala pa tayong questions eh. <laughs> ah, yung isang question pala from before pa. Are you are you guys uh, willing to share your presentations ba? Ah, sure. Ako, I'm good with it. Maybe, uh, sir, maybe we can um, uh, send it through Brilliant Creations and when you send the certificates, yeah. maybe ano yeah. po siya. We can do that. Okay. Okay. Willing, willing po kami. Thank share. you. Thank you so much. Okay, so do we have any questions? Uh, may... You know, I encourage everyone to to enter your questions in our chat. Mayapan questions, but I saw here. Hello, po, kay Miss Beng De Vera. She was my teacher in high school. Hello. Wow. Po. <laughs> you must be very proud of your student. <laughs> Bilog ang mundo. Hello, po. So, ikaw na yung teacher ng teacher mo. <laughs> yes, po. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, do you guys have any questions also for Sir Michael? Sa asynchronous naman, no? And I think uh, one observation that we can we can see, no, from from their presentations is yung asynchronous talaga ang majority of the the week, right? Am I mistaken? Yes. Parang once a week lang, no? Yung synchronous. Yes. Um, yes. In CIIT po kasi what we do is that for each subject, there's only one hour of synchronous sessions and then the per rest week. are asynchronous. Yes, per week weekly. or for the whole ano? Yes, weekly. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. I think ano, uh, kasi I also, I teach at Thames International School and ganun din sila, no? parang sabi nila 30% daw uh, ang limit for, for synchronous sessions. Because we also have to understand that some of our students also have problems with internet. In fact, yes. ako din may problems with internet sometimes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh, ano, Sir Sherwin has shared in the chat uh, area no, a PDF of, of the, the template course. I hope uh, everyone gets to download this. No? And also, I'm also downloading this and um, putting it up on our site if that's okay. In the in the page for, for this webinar. Oh, there's a question here that the, the methods now are applicable for the college students. So how about for the younger ones now? How would you adjust uh, your your presentation? Mm. Do you guys have experience about teaching younger, like maybe grade school or even high school, the younger junior high? <laughs> ano ba? Sir Michael? <laughs> Hello. Uh, Sir, Sir Castle. Sir Castle. Hello po. Good afternoon po. So, to answer the question, I asked two questions po kanina. One question was, uh, which LMS can be used for uh, elementary students? Tama po ba? Kay, I forgot the name. Same yeah, question yeah. that she gave. Ma- Maria, Maria, and Maria and Dominic. And preschool din pa. Yes. So, the, siguro, the, I, I can suggest edmodo.com. Edmodo.com is a um, free learning management system that was used usually from uh, different basic educations. So before, kasi before I go to college, before I in, before I came into CIIT, sa basic ed po ako nagtuturo. So usually we use Edmodo because kasi ang itsura po ni Edmodo para siyang Facebook. Uh, ganun po itsura. So kayo medyo engaging siya sa bata. Mas visually appealing siya sa mga bata. So it's the best suggestion that I can suggest for learning management system to use for elementary students. And the next question, uh, about, about for younger kids. Siguro po pag younger kids, the best way that you can do for your uh, online classes is siguro po dapat yung teacher kasi kapag elementary or younger kids, dapat yung teacher, kaya ginagawa rin naman po to sa loob ng classroom, yung sobrang animated yung teacher. So, siguro pag gumagawa po tayo ng nakapag-online, nakasynchronous learning po tayo, I suggest na yung background po natin, medyo interactive siya. Or maybe you can do some 
uh, editing dun sa mga recorded videos nyo. Then, pag dun naman po sa synchronous, yun lang po. Kailangan talaga animated siya. So, pwede ang pinaka-suggestion ko naman po para dun sa kapag live yung discussion nyo, yun nga po. Just like what said, what Sir Michael said a while ago, si Google Meet kasi meron siyang free for education institutions. So, yun po yung pinaka-suggestion ko po. Um, may addition po ako regarding that. Um, how to address yung needs ng mga younger learners po natin. Um, dito po, very important ang role ng mga magulang or yung primary caretakers ng mga bata sa kanilang mga bahay. Because, of course, grade 3, grades, grade 3 to grade 6, usually kasakasama po nila mga adults sa bahay. And um, when we're gonna be doing the, in, 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 nagbigay na po Sir Castle ng tip niya for the synchronous, okay? Um, yung bibigay ko po for the asynchronous is to really involve the parents in um, the learning of the of the of the kids so kung may pwede kayong mag, magsali ng mga parents sa isang uh, messenger thread or is instant messaging app so mga parents po yun nandoon lang so yung mga parents ang magmo-monitor din sa kanilang mga anak and at the same time yung mga materials po na gagawin ninyo uh, may parents instructions na parang instruction for the parents make sure ito po yung mga na-achieve or um, this is how you can explain it to your child or and, and what not always uh, pag younger kids home learning may may um, involve yung parents or uh, primary guardians nila dun sa learning involved. Yes. Um there's a question here do you guys have experience before special ed special ed kids? Uh si- just to answer that question how about for for set for sped kids? Siguro po pag sped kids kasi medyo ano po talaga yan kailangan po ng sa dito parang help with the parents. Kasi siyempre hindi sila, depende po kasi dun sa spectrum ng student. Yes. So, kailangan po yung teachers and then at the same time or the parents were also trained how to go on with their online classes. Kasi iba po yung approach kapag pwede. More of, ano sila, um, how would I say this? Parang, how would I, I can, I can, I can think of the correct term. Um, yung kailangan interact kasi po, Pag, uh, fortunately po kasi dun sa previous school ko po, meron kaming SPED department. So, hindi, ngayon, ang naiisip ko lang po na pwede gawin nga po, yun, pagiging animate. Mahirap kasi talaga siya. Yung, iba kasi yung mga, um, kung hindi ako nagkahama, iba po yung mga learning competencies na binibigay sa mga SPED kids. Yes. So, siguro dapat si teacher po, kailangan niyang ma- lay down first. Just like what we are doing. We first lay down our plans. So, kailangan niya munang maayos yun. And then, sa hapon natin isipin yung pinaka how you're going to um, give it to the students. Kasi medyo ano eh, malawa kasi pag sa SPED eh. Medyo iba yung approach niya unlike kapag dun sa regular, dun sa mga students natin na uh, uh, regular students natin. Kailangan po natin munang i-lay down lahat ng mga gagawin natin kasi more of practical activities ang ginagawa po sa SPED. Hindi sila more of yung sa regular students na kailangan. Ito, y- ito yung competencies na nakalagay. Ito yung gagawin. Alay sa SPED po, specialized din talaga yeah. pati yung content niya. Mm-hmm. Case to case rin kasi eh. Depende talaga mm-hmm. kung ano yung case ng bata. Yun nga po. Sa, just like what Ma'am Shirley said, US po with shadow teacher sila sa face-to-face from yeah. Yung sa face, yun nga po, sa SPED po, di ba, may shadow teacher. Usually po, di ba, yung shadow teacher, nasa likod siya ng classroom habang nag-discuss po si teacher. So, monitor yung ginagawa ng bata. I don't know if you're planning to deploy shadow teachers to the different houses of your students. Kasi I don't know if that's possible. Medyo mahirap din po yung kon. Pero kasi di ba, kapag sa, sa regular SPED classes, ay, sa regular classes mo, kasi di ba, meron pong yung bata na sa loob ng sped classroom or meron din po mga bata na were already brought to a regular class may shadow teacher lagi yun sa likod unlike po kapag sa sped class di ba is lang yung teacher o may mga shadow teacher sila sa loob iba po kasi kumbaga parang kailangan po muna nating i-lay down on how are we going to plan kasi iba po kasi yung pag sinabi natin may shadow teacher so alangan papuntahin po natin yung teacher yung shadow teacher dun sa mga bahay ng mga bata yeah. Okay, so I think uh, I have two questions here. The first one I think was addressed by um, Sir Michael, no? Yung tukol sa email. I think email is a very, again, to, to be able to use Gmail or yung Google Mail, kailangan talaga may email ka. And then I think Sir Michael also said, kung 
one of the worst case scenarios no kung mahina talaga yung internet email really is your ano your friend no doon mo talaga ipapadala lahat ng materials so i think email talaga is a, the number one requirement right for for all students kasi yun yung ano nila eh yun yung gagamitin yung yes. pang attendance pang access ng lessons so I think that's yes. that's a prerequisite. And then the other yes. question here is how do you manage the behavior? I think this is maybe for synchronous, no? Ah, okay. Um, so far with my experience, wala pa namang magulo. But the the advantage here of synchronous sessions, kasi, especially if you're hosting, if you're the teacher, really, is that. For example, di ba, pwede, pwede mong immute kung maingay or you can ask them. Because when it comes to student behavior, it's not so much ano eh, distracting eh, when you're doing it virtually. Because like I said earlier, it's uh, most probably, uh, abang nakikinig po yan sa, lessons na, uh, sa lectures natin, naglalaro yan or whatever. So, so far wala pa naman po. But if, um, when it comes to extreme measures there are options for example in google meet that you can uh, remove a user or okay, uh, he, uh-huh. also here in zoom you can remove right. a user or you can mute a user. so so in terms of behavior wala pa naman po masyadong distracting Oo. <laughs> then i also would like to address yung sa question dun sa email no yes um with regards to email, um, I would suggest that um, from, from grade 6 pataas, pwede na po natin sila pagawin ng email para we can also teach them how to communicate online because again, it's a necessary skill. Once they go to high school, to college, that's a necessary skill. How to communicate with email addresses. But for the um, lower grade levels, for example, prep grade 1, of course, um, it's better to med- uh, to use the account of the parents so that we can also monitor. Yes. I think yeah. that's my uh-huh. Yun yung magandang ano, compromise doon. Yes. <laughs> um, there's a question here. Would you know if DepEd will allow schools to deviate a little from the traditional curriculum to adapt to learning using online the online platforms? Kasi kayo ata yung kinausap ng DepEd, right? Or ng CHED? Would you know what their guidelines are or what their um, allowances Sige. are? Again, may I uh, answer that? As far as I will, I'll know, sir, yung regarding sa tanong na would you know if DepEd will allow schools to deviate a little from the traditional curriculum to adopt to learning using on platform? So, currently po, si DepEd po nag-release siya ng learning continuity plan. I think they are requiring all basic education schools to submit the learning continuity plan and they can uh, deviate from what is their, from what is the content of the specific curriculum nila. Kung paano po, kung parang they will just focus on essential competencies na lang. Kasi di ba siyempre, there are some topics kasi po dun sa competency, competency galing, dep, galing po sa DepEd na we think we can be able, we can categorize as non-essential. Kumaga, so yun po, kailangan po mag-submit ng mga schools tipo po ng mga learning continuity plans nila. Mm-hmm. So from there, they can maybe for... deviate from the previous, uh, the regular curriculum that was given by DepEd. Yeah. Also, if I may add, if I'm not mistaken sa DepEd, uh, for example, here, here, kasi I have a sister who is entering senior high school. Is grade 11 in the science high school. So, if I'm not mistaken, they will be adapting a blended learning approach. So, for for the blended learning, it's like what we're using right now. So, uh, they have one hour for this subject and then the rest will be dedicated for, uh, for asynchronous lessons using modules. So, I think pinayagan naman po ni DepEd and um, better to ask then also yung sa division level. Okay. And then there's a question here. How about yung ano, no? For online learning, how are you handling yung mga honors or mga awards? Are those applicable during this time? Ah, honors. Oh, paano ba? <laughs> oh, nga. Meron bang ganun? Uh, Sir Castle? <laughs> <laughs> Ay, sige po. With regards to the honors kasi, since we are on the college level, 
we usually give honors at the end of their program. Mm, hindi so, yearly. So ngayon siguro oh, kasi Walang hindi kami list. we're not Meron kaming dance list pero we don't usually do it na parang you're going to call them and then we're going to announce na uh, certain like for example si uh, Patrick Pineda you are now a dance parang something we don't have the recognition for dance list though we are placing it on a bulletin board that can be seen by all before ah nung nasa okay ano pero ngayon kami, sa uh, online pag online meron pa sa ngayon dance kasi we just started our uh, online classes iba last June 15 So we are still planning on how are we going to probably we're going to we since we are using our Facebook account of the school so probably that's a uh, one venue that we can use for um, announcing who are our dance lister for this term. Pero kasi ano currently yung ano namin yung policy namin in terms of dance lister nakad nakadepende pa siya dun sa um, nung regular pa regular oh, so wala on, uh, ba, no? regular trimesters namin. Sa ngayon, we're still planning kasi we reduce yeah. the number of subjects na in-offer sa bata. Ang maximum lang po ng bata na pwede i-take is five. So for now, we will have to siguro revisit our policies in, the, in terms of the dance listers. Yes, yeah, so I guess sabay-sabay natin kinakapapa, no? How do how uh, do we handle awards, recognitions, etc. Just to we're add still to figuring five. it out. <laughs> Yes sir. Yung suggest to add dun sa suggestion lang po dun sa synchronous classes kasi ako I'm teaching mathematics. What I'm okay. doing in my class kapag sa klase is there are some kasi you will notice na some students are not akala mo nakikinig sila kasi naka sila. Pero in reality, hindi sila nakikinig. So ginagawa ko dun minsan, nyari, I want, I'm asking a questions or say for example I'm presenting a computation, I uh, use Microsoft whiteboard for my synchronous classes while I am discussing sulot ako sa Microsoft Word for tapos and then I will ask I will pause for a while and then I will ask questions and then suddenly doon mo mano notice na yung mga bata akala mo nakikinig sila pero hindi kasi magwala ka na kailang tawag ka na walang sumasagot so right. ibig sabihin no, probably they are just um, they just log in doon sa Google Meet ko kasi sa CIIT po Google Meet ang ginagamit nag-log in lang sila doon pero in reality hindi sila nakikinig <laughs> mas yeah. prefer talaga na just what like Patrick kasi a while ago they prefer yung recorded lectures kasi right. they can go back yun so what I'm currently doing now parang sa synchronous discussions ko yung face to face namin ano na lang yun parang question and answer for sure if there are some questions regarding dun sa recorded lecture so ganun na lang yung ganun yung naging naging agreement namin with my students Yeah, saka ako ano, um, yun nga pag nararamdaman mo na nawala ka ng kausap, you ask for <laughs> for feedback na kung nandiyan pa ba kayo or raise your hand or <laughs> mag-react. And then I suddenly, sa minsan din na, I randomly call names. So right. doon ko malalaman kung nakikinig sila o hindi. Yes. Okay, there's a question here, no? What is the, the major weakness in handling synchronous learning? Ah, Okay. Major weakness in synchronous learning. Um, in my case, for example, uh, syempre, we're, we're all adjusting. No? Aside from the internet connection problems, like, buti nga, hindi po ako nadidisconnect ngayon, no? Um, na-experience ko na po kasi na while I'm doing my classes, nadidisconnect ako, mag-PM na lang sa student ko, sir, wala po kayo. So, <laughs> sometimes ganun. Um, One major weakness in handling synchronous learning is that hindi kasi natin sila nakikita. So sometimes we don't feel na um tawag dito that we're teaching. So sometimes you have to really check from time to time the question. So it's really a balance of discussing and then engaging with your students. So pero ang magandang tip din po diyan, try niyo po makipag-video chat sa mga ano hindi pala sa studyan, sa mga kamag-anak nyo. And then, yung isa, nakamute lang. <laughs> Let's say, hindi siya nagmamike. And then, ma- makipagkwentuhan kayo. Then, doon nyo po makikita, okay, ganito pala para mag-adjust, okay, ganito pala. So, ano na, it takes practice really eh. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, if I can just add, so, somebody commented here na, kailangan ba daw naka-video all the time yung student. So I guess ano nga eh no kasi nga may limitation no. So some some students have slow internet connections and para bumilis yun kailangan mo talagang i-off yung video. Yes. So um 
So ang ginagawa namin sa Dems is some, ano lang, magkakaroon lang kami ng parang round table na o oh, ikaw, uh, Michael, buksan mo yung video mo and then magpapresent siya. Tapos, okay, now you can turn it off. Ikaw naman, Patrick, buksan mo yung video mo. Alam mo yon So pwede kayong, pwedeng ganun na parang mag-round table kayo na <laughs> take turns turning on your video para hindi hindi matakaw sa bandwidth. Yeah, ako what I do is that I do it five students at a time para hindi masyadong malas kumain ng bandwidth. Right. Kasi yes. yun nga, pag madami po kasi naka-on ng video, uh, pag nagsabay-sabay, bumabagal yung internet. Yes. Yun. Yon, so it's uh, 3:58. So I think ano, no? I think nagmaganda naman yung discussion natin. So I want to thank our speakers for today, Michael, Patrick, and Sir Castle and Sir Sherwin for for organizing this webinar. Thank you so much. So we'll be I hope you were able to download the the file that uh, Sir Sherwin shared sa chat, pero I'll be also uploading that on our website. And again, this is recorded, so we will post this on our YouTube page and share it on our Facebook page as well. So again, thank you so much to CIIT no? and to Sir Michael, Sir Patrick, Sir Castle, and Sir Sherwin for, for the very informative uh, presentations. Um, Uh, I know that uh, you guys are you know, one of the pioneers of this online, ano, one of the the courageous ones na sumabak talaga to embrace the the online um, world that we have now for our schools. And I hope everyone will will follow suit. Sana hindi kay matakot to to. Again, we are still figuring it out. Everyone is is um, figuring it out. So that's why we're having this webinar so we can help each other figure it out and. Hopefully, speed up the the learning curve, no. So again, thank you very much. Um, again, we will send you guys uh, a form to to fill up, so that you will get your um, certificates. So, thank you so much. So stay safe, uh, wash your hands. <laughs> we will all be um, out of this sooner than later. We hope. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon.